I'm going to say a few things about the last assignment and the final project in general, accepting any questions to follow. I'm going to review the, the, with you what happens after this, especially with the oral presentations that are connected to the contents of the final project. I'll review with you the suggestions I posted and the sample questions for the final exam. Week 12 is up there as well to show you what's in it. And before we watch scenes from today's movies, Le Mans from 1971, I'm going to say a few things to introduce the film, okay? So, <clears throat> for the final project, I'm still in the process of reviewing the suggestions that you posted as part of the last assignment. And if you haven't had a chance to post anything there, late submissions are accepted with no penalty because the key component in this case is for you to have an idea that you are on the right path, that you can identify within the corpus of magazines from the early 1900s posted in this page, stories that are worthy of inclusion and treatment cataloging in the final project. Together with good suggestions, I also found in those assignments call for help about not finding the story. And the first thing I want to tell you, and then we can get into the nitty gritty review the process, is you need to put in time in order to find those stories. So I tried again, since this is a slightly revised format compared to the previous years. So Wednesday night, I uh, went into the links of various magazines looking for stories and I found six in about two hours. So if it takes me roughly 20 minutes per story, it might take you half an hour or even longer to find it. Make sure you embrace the correct mindset. This is not a regular Google search where you expect to find the answer by scrolling within just a few seconds, within 30 seconds or a minute. You do have to try in different ways and the ways are basically keywords, but those keywords can produce different effects in different magazines. That is to say, for some magazines you have to use in some magazines, you might have to mostly rely on automobile or motor car or just the word car. But in others, when you rely on the word car, you might find that most of the references might have to do with train cars, trolley cars, subway cars, right? Instead of what today we normally call a car. Right? So you have to also, in the process of your research, adapt to the text. And there is nothing wrong in just embracing the opposite and scrolling through the pages just by looking at illustrations and titles quickly until you bump into something that is worth reading. And then just by reading the first paragraph or the first two paragraphs, you have an idea whether, for example, this is an article. So not good because we're looking for a short story. Whether this is indeed a short story, but whether or not this short story has enough focus on the automobile or it is just a story where at some point the character gets out of the house, hails a cab and uses a taxi cab to go some places, some place, but the story is entirely about something else. One more thing that I want to uh, say is that there are stories 
that are much longer than the ones that I provided as examples, which you find on this page. In that case, and I already discussed that with one of the students earlier this week, in that case, a longer story, you know that the project is supposed to be based on the cataloging of three stories based on this template, but if you have a story that is long, or in the case of this student, the story was in two parts, right? So it was almost like a novella. Then I don't see anything wrong on my side in going from three to two stories as long as the treatment of your extra long story is done to, in, in such a way that you provide more details about the synopsis, more quotes, and a longer analysis. So in, ref in reference to the numbers, the template says find three short stories. But if you find one that is five pages long or 10 pages long and a, a complex story with a strong focus on the automobile, you can use th that in lieu of two of the stories and just add another one. If, of course, if you're not sure whether the story you have would be such that it can replace two stories by itself, you let me know. You send me a link, right? Don't send me just the title. Send me a link that takes me directly to the story whereby I can see the story. If I know the story, otherwise I'll read that myself quickly and tell you, yes, you can definitely make this count for two. You still have to meet the required minimum length, which is 2,400 words, including quotes for the project, between 2,400 and 3,000 words, right? And in reference to the max, the max is more flexible than the minimum. The minimum is something you should stick to but if you have 3,200 words instead of 3,000, it's not like you have to go back and cut here and there, right? That wouldn't be a problem. The problem would be if you, if you send me 10,000 words for, for the project or something like that. Let me show you once again, for in reference to the first stage of the work for the project, finding the stories, so we're, I'm inside the page called Format and Methodology for the Final Project 2023, right? And if I go to the table of contents, I find the primary sources, the context of the research. This is where I find the links. Although these links are generic, right? They take me to a collection of magazines, right? When I hit this one, then I find numerous years, and of course I try to focus on years that are relevant for the car, right? I don't go to the 1880s. Even the 1890s usually don't contain many stories. I would start with 1902 or 1903, right? And then I can click And I can search in this text using different keywords and look at the results. I have emphasized the use of collections such as Avi Trust simply because Google Books is wholly unreliable in terms of supplying what they have to every user at every point in time. They try not to show you the entire collection for a magazine, even if they have it. They don't include it in your searches. Your search might come out empty, even though they have the magazine for 1903. So if you would rather work with Google, and there are good reasons to love the interface of Google, for research rather than Avi Trust, which is, however, more reliable in terms of academic 
scholarly research. It's very simple. Start from Adit Trust, but then within the left sidebar, you will have we will find this section called get this item and the second option which is almost always there rarely missing is download at google books so i can go from here into google books open it and then if i'm familiar with the boolean search language for example i can use or right with capital O, capital R, to do a multiple word search. So for example, in here I have automobile, or motor car, or car, or motor, because sometimes motor car was abbreviated with the word motor and still was used in reference to the automobile. So I can click this, which would stay in my search box so I can reuse it for any number of magazines, hit go, and then normally Google will organize the searches by relevance, which may be your preference. To me, especially for a collection that is not so small, pages tell me more because I can just see if there are repeated pages close to one another, then I have a short story where the first page, the second page, the third page have references to these words. Now, of course, there is no real intelligence in this kind of search. So for example, for car, the system will also give you car hyphen pet. So the hyphenated carpet or hyphenated cardinal will produce a positive hit, which is of no relevance to us, right? But this is one way to look at this kind of research, right? Where I can go and stop, for example, in here, I find car twice, so that might be promising, but then I look and I see that once it is street car, the other is tram car, so not what the kind of car that I'm looking for. And whenever I want to stop and look, of course, I can just click, look at the title, look at the first paragraph, right? And see if the context is such that it is worth reading more from it. And when I go into this view, I can see highlighted in yellow, the multiple hits. But again, it is a process that requires time. And I can decide quite quickly that actually, what did we have, 1902, something like that? Yeah, that definitely might be too early for Harper's Magazine to publish short stories on the automobile in 1902. And I simply go back and, and say, let me try the next one, right? Until I, fi I find something. But you have to commit a certain amount of time before you can find a suitable <coughs> story. And you don't have to give up or proclaim it's impossible within two minutes or five minutes, okay? And as I said, I generally use keywords, however, and that was a small selection of keywords, you can come up with more or phrases, but you can also simply scroll, you can even download the entire thing if you think that scrolling offline will be quicker, depending on how fast your broadband connection is where you're doing this search and then you scroll because, as I said, titles, illustrations will give you a fairly good hint that you should stop and have a second look and otherwise you just scroll, you get to the end and you move on to another one and if you find that one of these, let's say Harper, doesn't give you the results quickly enough, you can move to another magazine, right? You can use any number of these links, but you have to understand that this is the idea of the corpus, 
right? Because we want to make this a good replica of a lower level kind of research work, archival research work, right? Where you're doing actual work instead of asking ChatGPT to produce a paper. And, and poor ChatGPT is crashing today uh, because uh, apparently there is too, too many requests even on ChatGPT Plus. Um, they're, they're not able to handle the, the traffic. That's not the idea. That's not the kind of project where ChatGPT or similar AI tools will help you. Because the first thing is for you to put your eyes on the actual publications, find the stories, and I can also tell you if indeed you don't find anything and you're running out of time, you can reach out to me and I'll loan you one of the stories that I have found, but don't expect to get 100 out of 100. Uh, my strongest preference would be for the students to be able to find stories. And as I said, if you find a story that is quite long and therefore too long for a treatment restricted to 800 words, you can ask to have that story count as two, in which case you only have to find another one. Once you have those stories, of course, then you can proceed towards your project because you need to get organized to have something to say during your own presentation, even though your project may not be finished at all by that time. And this is where you go to this template and review the various points. So I start by providing a complete bibliographical reference and a link, make sure the link takes directly to the story. I look for some information about the author and, and this I can do through Google, right? Especially Google Books, I would restrict my research depending on the author. And you may or may not find information about the author but you have to make an effort. After you've read the story, you classify the style. Is it a romantic comedy of sort? Is it a tragic story, etc. And you provide a synopsis, you prepare a series of quotes that must be the most interesting, the most exciting, but in order for the quotes to be so, it's not just a theme. If it is just a theme, you talk about it in the synopsis, you discuss it in the analytical section. Must be how interesting the theme of your short quote is in reference to the language that is being used. Because the language is really give the reader insight into the treatment of the topic in the story and then you also include a brief analysis inside this brief analysis. Of course, there are suggestions here. If need be, there is room for a short comparison between one story that you found and another, especially if you see in, in some kind of articulation of the general topic, right? Because if you have two completely different stories, then I, I wouldn't include a comparison just to say my first story is about two people falling in love with a car the second story is about a, a child hit by a car and the mother's grief okay yeah it's unless you find a connection a comparison is not relevant right if you have a comparison between a camel and a boat well you, you might find the, the shape of the hump of the camel connected to the boat, but unless the comparison includes some connections, if the comparison is just to say how different these two things are, then the comparison is not a tool you want to avail yourself of. But if you have two stories that treat the automobile differently, but the differences represent an articulation of the topics and the themes along the same spectrum, then a comparison is significant. And before I receive your questions about this, let me just 
show you what's the next step after you embark in the work related to the project. During the last week of classes, we will not see each other in this room because I will be meeting individually with the students. So if you find here, there is no lecture on Tuesday and Thursday that week, but for every day that week, and for the first few days, the next week, the reading days, you find reference to oral presentations and the link that allows you to schedule your presentation. You go here, you see all the options. These are all the days that are available. And then you say, Professor, I want to be the first one because I've worked the whole semester on the project. I'm ready. And for every day, you see the slots that are available right now. If anyone picks the 1 p.m. slot, of course, that will not be available to the next person. Once you pick one, you provide basic information and you receive a message. And you keep that message that confirms your appointment because from there, you can cancel and reschedule if need be. So my suggestion would be, as soon as you feel comfortable, schedule a, a, a presentation on Zoom. And then, if you find that either you're not ready or you have something else to finish for another class, you try and reschedule. This is, is possible through these nine days. And of course, uh, keep in mind that slots might disappear if myself, if I have a meeting scheduled at between 11 and noon, those time slots will automatically disappear as soon as I place the meeting inside my agenda but let me show you again when you select one you provide your first name your last name your email you don't need to put anything in here unless you have you you want to include <laughs> the link to a story that you present during your oral presentation or something else that might facilitate the interaction that day and then you press schedule and you receive an email as I said okay um, this is not the only option it is the preferred the recommended option otherwise you can record a video preferably on zoom and share it with me but that way if you do it on Zoom, you'll also have my feedback, right? At that point, your project is not completely done. You may present on just one of the stories, right? Which would be enough to give you 10 minutes to, of material to talk about. But then I can tell you, yes, it's a strong story. I see that you've identified the strongest themes in this. Or I can tell you, why don't you develop this aspect of the story? Why don't you emphasize this particular theme? or uh, your story, you, you, you may have a good presentation, but I may tell you the presentation is good, but the story is kind of weak. So maybe you should make sure your project includes two more stories that are stronger in terms of the relevancy of the automobile in that story. Those kinds of feedback you will receive right away during this presentation. Whereas when I get videos, then I tend to save those videos and uh, whenever I have time, I'll review them and email or place in the Google Docs uh, my feedback. But the process is slower. And also, there is no way if you do a recorded video, there is no way for you to receive other kinds of feedback, such as if you come on Zoom, and you want to read your whole presentation, I'll stop you, right? Because the presentation is not reading. That's called a paper, and I can read. The presentation is talking about the topic. It doesn't have to be formal. Forget about the assumptions that if you present for an academic class, everything has to be perfect. Maybe if you're asking for a billion dollars for, for, from investors, everything has to be perfect and perfectly rehearsed. But otherwise, for this kind of presentation, you come on screen, put the story on the screen, and you talk about the story, and you show me that you can discuss the story 
without having to read word for word what you uh, have to say about the story. So your presentation doesn't have to be perfect. The pedagogical goal is to show me that you have acquired language, the analytical tools that you're comfortable uh, talking about a story on the automobile, right? And as I said, you have 10, 15 minutes, so I wouldn't give it a boring, formal, half a page presentation, right? I would go straight into this, or you can also start with what inspired you to choose this story? What, what struck your imagination or piqued your interest about a particular story? Or you can start just by summarizing the story before you go into the analysis of some passages, okay? So that was what I wanted to say about the project, the last assignment related to the project and the presentations, but I'll be more than happy to answer questions from you. And I'll continue reviewing those assignments between now, between tomorrow and Saturday, actually, I'll provide my feedback inside Google Docs, okay? Beyond even the assignment that was due November 10th, at any time, if you want to have received quick feedback about a story because you're on the fence, you don't know whether it's a good story or not, you send me an email or you schedule a meeting and I can tell you what I think about the story. Make sure you include the link. So I click on the link, I get to the first page of the story, I look at it and evaluate it for uh, direct feedback. Okay, questions about the project or the presentation? Yes. So how Jackie? long is like too short? Because uh, I have a couple of health facts, but especially with how Life Magazine has like weird presentations of. Right, and they have a lot of short stories which are like jokes. But and if the story is only 10, 15 lines, and really there is no articulation of the characters. It's just a small exchange leading to a punchline that would be too short. Okay. Once again, if you're not sure about it, you can send me a link. But normally, I would expect a story with a sufficient presentation of the themes that would warrant an analysis to be at least 500 words, perhaps. But it's hard to put a number, right? Because you could have a story that has little to say drag in that long. Okay, so consult with me when in doubt. But when you look at the examples, right? Because you find examples in here, you see that they tend to be all of these three examples are more than one page long, and each page has two or more columns. But more importantly, when you go in, there is enough for you to get an idea of who the characters are, right? Whereas if it is just a vignette, a social vignette, where uh, the master is talking to the chauffeur uh, about the car or about speeding, those are just social types. And there is nothing else that you can imagine about the owner of the car or the chauffeur beyond the quick exchange leading to the punchline. That would be an indication that really you don't have enough material to write then a catalog of following the template of roughly 800 words. Okay? Thank you. But I'll be happy to provide more direct feedback on a specific story uh, when, when you send it to me. You had a question, Madison? Yes. So rather than it being like the minimum amount of book or like rather story to be teased, it's the minimum amount of words, right? What What do you mean? Oh, what I mean within the document itself, I, I was in the state. For the project, the treatment of the story done with the various sections of that template, that should be a minimum of 800 words, right? Not the story. 
the story can be shorter or longer as long as you have. Oh, yeah, no, my bad. No, I, I, was under the I missed the question there. I was under the assumption that like, you need to choose a certain number of stories, not... Yes, three, three stories. Ah, three However, three. as I said, I don't know if you are already in the room, as I said at the beginning, if you have, and there are some stories that are five pages or longer, five big pages with multiple columns, there are some stories that may be long enough and have so much about the automobile because it's not just the length. You may have a story that is 10 pages and you may include it because the conclusion is about the automobile, which is fine. But if the whole story of several pages is about the automobile, you may have that count for two in, in this formula. So you would have one long story plus another one. But make sure, and you can verify that with me easily, make sure that the story is not only long, but substantial in reference to the topic. And then when you go through the template for that long story, you'll have to write a longer synopsis, a longer analytical section. So instead of 800 words, that the treatment of that long story will be twice as much. right? So that the whole project is still uh, articulated in terms of the same amount of content provided by you through your work. Okay. More questions about the project. And of course, not only now, but even next week and the week after that, I'll be asking you if you have questions about the project or about the presentation. But any questions right now? Okay, so let me review with you the notes I posted under week 11 about the final exam, but just to see if you have any questions, and I invite you to refer to this, to look at this carefully and, and not too quickly as we are doing now. So in the final exam, you will find five essay questions, and you have to answer four of them. And in terms of topic, three or four of the questions will come from the readings, such as Luigi Barzini's book, Back into Paris, or The Lightning Conductor, a motor car divorce. I said primary sources because those will be the focus of the questions, not an article on the automobile and such. And one or two of those questions will be on the films of course, there will be about the themes of the films, so you don't have to have memorized every single scene and every detail and every line in the film. And in fact, the question might be about two films. How's the articulation of the theme of the interaction, the relationship between the man and the machine in Bumblebee and Christine, or uh, Love Bug and Christine, etc. And you write between three and 500 words per essay question. And you will receive the day of the exam a packet with some excerpts where you can find examples for the texts. Okay? I included a series of tips, which is, of course, to provide a specific treatment of the topic. Avoid generic statement, don't simply describe what happens in a book. If you're talking about uh, the relationship between Molly and James in The Lightning Conductor, don't, don't just say a few generic things about their story. Try to discuss the significance of the story. And if you include references to examples, try to argue why the example is significant. Don't just include a passing reference. This is a kind of question. So the question is supposed to create a context for the essay that you're about to write and also give you options. Refresh your memory about the themes, provide some basic language points, right? And you can read this at home. But just to show that it's not 
The exam is not testing you, your ability to recall details from a story because as far as the theme of the relationship between the two characters and what happens between them thanks to their use of the automobile, you could rely on any number of examples or you could organize your questions in different ways, right? And this gives you a sense of the breadth of and the scope of the question Right? And within that, it's up to you to decide which direction to take. And as I said, if this is the question, you would find a few examples from the story, not the whole excerpts, but a couple of pages from the story with some examples. That's up to you if you want to use the examples in the packet or not. But the packet would allow some students not only to use the examples, but also to include significant quotes and then analyze them, okay? So these are the suggestions and review them and then we can talk about the exam during the next two weeks. This is week 12, which I revised on between Tuesday and, uh, and Wednesday because I was sick on Monday as well. So keep in mind that for the treatment of Luigi Balzini's packing to Paris, we are going, I'm not going to go back to it. Uh, so you should rely on these videos. The bookmarks take you directly to the beginning of a segment. So these are not three hours. It's less than that. It's just three segments where I discussed Balzini's book and Keep in mind that up, up until now, more or less, I, I think almost every exam has included a question on Balzini's book. Okay. So find the time to review those YouTube videos. Uh, assignments from now on are just readings. Okay. So besides the readings works, your, your work should focus on the final exam on the final project, sorry, and finding material to be ready for the presentation at the end of the semester. I've revised and expanded the page on today's movie, Le Mans, and I'm going to use some of the notes um, today. Of course, there are plenty of links. The links are just optional readings, just for your curiosity. Uh, you can find where the movie is streaming it is currently on Amazon although it was a recent acquisition for Amazon up until the 2010s the movie was only available for purchase because it had generated a cult following never placed on streaming platform <coughs> until a few years ago and Steve McQueen's son produced a nice documentary that came out in 2015, The Man in Le Mans. He was a kid in France uh, going through a difficult period for his family because his father uh, was about to separate from his mother. He would sometimes uh, abandon them in their French house and, and go out, um, be out the whole night, etc. And, and the documentary includes also the private a more personal portrait of, of this man who also suffered from depression, was short-tempered, could be short-tempered uh, on the set and also within his family. But the documentary and some of the articles you find here focus on the production of the film, which made the film unique and, and it was also somewhat difficult and in fact this is one of the few films where you find not one but two uh, books on the production of this film including one uh, um, that includes the point of view of a German actor playing the part of the antagonist Eric Stahler. Uh, a graphic novel was made a few years ago it's beautiful you can find a few pages in here 
and it's not shot by shot, but follows the movie pretty closely. It is not the whole movie, but the production was interrupted for some reason. So as far as I know, uh, a second book to complete the story has not come out. I included frames if you want to have follow closely the visual patterns in the films and of course some reviews that came out during that period again those are not required readings just to give you a sense of how the film was received and the criticism of it that was levied at Steve McQueen which at that time was really a big star think of Brad Pitt 20 years ago in terms of uh, the budget of the films where he was um, picked as the lead character and also the visibility on magazines and different media. In, in some ways he was at the peak of his career for the past five years. He had a number of uh, successful uh, films released and his career after this was not as good and he died nine years later in 1980 from from cancer he was 50 when he died and he was 40 when he shot this film okay so i will proceed with the introduction of the film so that we can watch a few scenes before we leave from the beginning but I want to tell you about the context of the film so that you can understand the film and its style a little better so Steve McQueen like many other actors especially American actors from that time some French actors as well loved race cars and did some races during the 1960s and 70s, especially during the 1960s, you have this whole category, which is hard to find these days, of the gentleman drivers. Basically, people rich enough to be able to afford a race car and a small crew of mechanics, but people who raced frequently enough to become proficient at racing, and once in a while, a gentleman driver would uh, get results. To give you a local example, during this period on Long Island near Bringhampton, there used to be a racetrack, which is now partially covered by a golf course, where gentlemen drivers from the Hamptons would take their Ferraris, their Jaguars, their Mercedes uh, to, to enjoy their cars, but also race in almost a serious fashion. Right? California had several racetracks at the period, some which have survived, but not all of them. And Steve McQueen really believed that he should rely on his own experience and his own understanding of what racing is about to produce a film that would be like no other and a, a big budget film. Right? That, that was supposed to be a big hit. And it wasn't. It wasn't as big a hit as he um, expected. In order to prepare thoroughly for the experience of the film, Sid McQueen himself participated in actual races. So, and, and longer racing because Le Mans is the story of a race that takes 24 hours, right? In the, the, the race still takes place every year at the beginning of, of June, the second week of June, between Saturday and Sunday. And so you need to also know what it means to be physically prepared for this kind of race. Usually you have two or three drivers for each car, but it's still a lot of hours of racing at high speed. So in 1969, he did the Baja 1000, which is a very famous at that time, especially off-road race in Mexico, in the California Peninsula of Mexico. The next year, at the beginning of next year, I believe it was in March, 
He participated in the 12 hours of Sebring, where he finished second. Of course, he was sharing the car with a professional driver, Peter Revson, and actually just a couple of years ago, it was, I believe, 2021, I went to Lime Rock, Connecticut for vintage racing, uh, and I sat down at lunch with a, a, a driver who was there in 1970 with driving an MG, and he said, well, Peter Revson did most of the driving, not, not the actor. And incidentally, not only was Steve McQueen not as good as a professional driver, but he had a foot in a cast because of an injury that he got before the race. Nonetheless, they qualified in second place, and they, at the end of the race, it looked like they, were, they could win. They were in first position during the last hour on many laps, and the idea, one of the ideas of the film came from this experience. Because in the film that we will see today and over another class, Steve McQueen's car crashes. <laughs> so he doesn't get to the end of the race and he's about to retire, right? He's getting ready to leave, changing in his RV. When the team manager comes and says, I need you on another car because the driver of the other car is not fast enough and it was possible according to the regulation of the period to take a driver of your team and put it on a different car. In this case the idea, and, and Steve McQueen goes on to help Porsche team win the race, but the idea of that came from something that happened in 1970 where Steve McQueen's Porsche 908 was battling against several Ferraris. And one of them was driven by Michael Andretti, who retired his car due to mechanical failure. And Andretti himself was eager to leave the track. He didn't want even to wait for the end of the race, but the Ferrari team manager called him and said, no, no, because Steve McQueen and this other, and, and Peter Revson are winning the race. I'll put you on another Ferrari and you have to catch up with them. And lap after lap, of course, Andretti was faster than both McQueen and Revson, and eventually passed them, and they qualified in second place. The same car that was used on this 12-hour race in Sebring was then modified. They put three cameras on it, and it was entered at the 24 hour of Le Mans in 1970. Steve McQueen wanted to be the driver there, and uh, of course, the insurance, production insurance said, no way, right? Too much of a risk. We, we are insuring the production of this film. We don't want you on a 24 hour race. So the car was entered as a guest car. It was driven for about eight to 10 hours during the, film, during the race, the actual race, but they shot tens of thousands of meters of film, part of which was included in the, in the film. A collector from, who lives in Connecticut uh, owns the car that Steve McQueen drove at Baja, the Baja 1000, and he is doing, producing a replica of, of that. Just to show you that the legends surrounding the film, right? So people are still interested, uh, people in, in the area, in, in the field of racing are still interested. This is the car I was talking about that had participated in the Sebring race and was rigged. This is a camera, that's a camera, and there are two cameras, one looking behind the driver and another looking at the cars behind this, right? Which is one of the reasons, and you can see even better in here, and this is an actual race car, so there were even though they were not on the racetrack for 24 hours, when they were on the racetrack, they couldn't go slower than the other cars. So they were going as fast, other than the fact, of course, the aerodynamics is not ideal. You can see the bump where the film is, right? And they would stop, not just to refuel or change the tires, but to put new film on it. <coughs> What Steve McQueen did was they all 
went to Le Mans with this rigged car in 1970, in June 1970, to shoot, to shoot some film to include in the uh, actual release. And then when the race was over, they created this uh, uh, solar village with trailers for the crew. And they spent the next few months until the end of September there, the whole summer plus the beginning of the fall, shooting the, this film. And they actually ran out of money because they prolonged the shoot so much. And of course, they were renting the car. So the more they stayed there and the more money had to be paid for the cars. But this contributes to the lore and the allure of the film because no one will ever be able to do anything else that is so realistic and commit so much time to this. So they went to Porsche and Ferrari requesting official cars. Ferrari said no because Enzo, the owner, was famously difficult. And the very idea that he should loan cars for a film where Ferrari is not winning the race was, was really anathema to him. Porsche agreed, so they got some uh, official of the official Porsches. So some of the cars you see here actually were in the race of 1970. And then they stayed there and were used for the film. And they rented other cars from private teams because there were private teams all over Europe that had Porsche and Ferrari cars purchased from the companies. They used for the, on the set, when they were rushing around, racing around, they used some gentleman driver, some real driver, like Joe Seifert, who would die the next year in a Formula One accident. So imagine trying to do this nowadays. Their production cost ended up being 7.5 million, but this was produced initially by Steve McQueen, who put his own money in it. And when he ran out of money, he had a few other investors, but when he ran out of money and the film was not finished, he had to surrender the rights to the film. Basically, he found people willing to pay for the completion of the film, but they said, okay, you're not going to make a penny off of this as a producer. You're not going to make a penny as an actor. He was supposed to receive $750,000 from 1970. Right? And of course, we'll hold the rights to the movie in perpetuity, etc. And he agreed because he loved the project so much that he agreed. They brought in an old school director, Katzen, saying, finish this as quickly and as cheaply as possible. Yet, what came out in the end is really mostly the vision of the film that Steve McQueen had. And they spent a lot of time there, months there because he was a perfectionist. You have a 24-hour race, so the light changes, right? The scenes are shot in the afternoon, or at night, or at dawn. So if they had a, a scene from the script for a certain period of time, they would have to wait for the right light, the right kind of sky to ensure continuity. And then when the conditions were right, they might, and the documentary says that the books also confirmed that they might spend two or three hours just trying one car passing another, right? Shooting that from different angle. Just the, a line from the script saying, Michael's car passes uh, Eric Stoll, Stoller's car, right? And they would do it over and over again until they thought it was perfect. Since at some point it is raining, Later on, they would have to flood the track when they were shooting the scenes in the story where it rains. They would stop to rig the car with different cameras. And we have pictures from the books, <coughs> and you can find some of them online, of these real race cars, but with pipes, with cameras mounted, and they would change these mounts. They rigged cars for the accidents so that they could control the cars that were crashed remotely. And whenever they uh, had to crash, film the crash of a Ferrari or a Porsche, they couldn't crash the actual car. It was too expensive. 
so they would take a cheaper car, obsolete by that time, mostly Lola's, and they would dress up the Lola to look like Ferrari or a Porsche, and they called them Lolari or Porsche-Lolas. I should have added an A, an a there, right? And you can see in some of the scenes. They were driving so realistically because the problem with today's movies of racing is that First of all, they rarely use the actual cars. And, and they will take smaller, cheaper cars and dress them up like a sports car. Second, they usually drive at 50 or 60 miles per hour based on the contract with their insurers, right? And then they may slow down, right? They play the slow-mo to give the impression that they're going very fast, but it's kind of beautiful. In here, they were often driving in excess of 150 miles per hour. There was actual driving, they were all professionals. And in fact, one day on the set, one of the gentleman drivers, a British driver, had an accident that was so bad that he lost a leg. And he's also being interviewed in the documentary, still alive. And Steve McQueen, of course, made everything more difficult. He was fixated on using the camera to tell the story. So whenever they, the, they started shooting without a finished script. Whenever they presented him with new scenes, he would say, no, reduce the number of lines. We don't need these many words to tell the story. And we know anecdotally that one day he tore the page of the script that was submitted to him and the, and the screenwriter cry for the humiliation, okay? So, they're still doing racing movies, right? Brad Pitt is trying to make a movie on Formula One that is supposed to come out in 2025. And uh, they finished shooting Ferrari, directed by Michael Mann, about Enzo Ferrari in between the 19, late 1950s and 1960s. But will they be so realistic in terms of the kinds of cars and the kinds of speed, it remains to be seen. So far, I've only seen uh, videos of them driving in Italy with actual cars from the 1950s, but again, they were driving very slowly with a camera car following a Ferrari Testarossa, but for a car that was able to drive at 170 miles, they were probably doing 20 or 30 miles in the scenes that I saw that were shot by people who were there. So, as I said, the film is inspired in terms of style by this style called French New Wave that came out in the 1950s, was the predominant style in the 1960s, both in Europe and in the US for artistic films. The idea behind that is that the camera is the pen, camera stilo, because if you use the pen, then you end up writing a book. But if you have a camera, then use the camera to tell the story, not the lines, right? Which is, of course, a shortcoming of many films produced today. They're excessively clear. Everything is, has to be explained at length. In here, if you miss a bit, if you miss a frame, then you miss a detail that explains a twist in the story, that shows a twist in the story. Whereas Movies of today are based on the assumption that people are not paying attention even in the theaters, and therefore you can rely on a small visual detail to advance the story. And they show not just the race, they also show the racetrack, the people coming to the racetrack, but the whole film is about the race. Most of it is just about this long Race. And you can read some of these notes yourself because I'm coming to the end in terms of uh, time. Um, and so we'll see the, the beginning of the story. And from the very beginning, you can see that this is a story that is being told with images because at the beginning of the story, you have a man and a woman, they don't exchange any lines, they don't say anything, 
but you start building up the story in your mind that there is some kind of connection, right? So, you know we're in France, we don't need to tell you, right? And there is someone driving a Porsche 911, which is, of course, Steve McQueen going to the racetrack. 